To answer the question, what is a moment, what we need to look at is uh, just a little experiment. So imagine that we have this seesaw um, over here, and let's imagine that we apply a force pointing downward. So let's say that we apply a force right over there. That was a terrible arrow. Let me try one more time. Okay, a little bit better. So apply a force F. We could apply this in uh, many different ways. Uh, probably the easiest way would be just to place a mass on top of that and uh, see what happens to our, to our setup. What we're going to notice is rotation. So um, this uh, this bar of the, of the seesaw will actually rotate. In fact, I can probably demonstrate this with my virtual ruler over here. But depending on the direction of the force, this will either move this way or the other way if I was to switch the direction of the force. But notice that it will want to rotate and in fact it will rotate around a pivot point. So um, a moment actually describes the turning effect of a force. In physics though a moment has a very very precise definition so a moment is the magnitude of the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force which is along here so let me just draw the line of action of the force so that's along here like so this is our line of action so the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point. So it will be this distance over here. Okay guys, so now that we know what a moment is, let's apply that to this experiment over here. So we have a force F with its line of action. Um, which is being drawn over here in, in grey. The perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, let's just draw that over here. And uh, I'm going to call this distance D. So um, this angle here is 90 degrees. The moment, let's call it M, that will be the moment of force F, will be the magnitude of this force F multiplied by the perpendicular distance which is d perfect now additionally we need to know that there are two types of moments depending on which way the object that has the potential to rotate would rotate for example if f was the sole force acting on this seesaw um, it would rotate in an anti-clockwise direction so you can imagine that, let's see if you can imagine that with my virtual ruler, F will be rotating like so along this direction. So this makes the moment produced by F to be anti-clockwise. So anti-clockwise. Now if we put another force, let's call that F2, when this will be acting along here. So let's say that this over here is F2. Uh, this is, let's say, at a distance d2, so this is going to be causing a moment. m2 will be f2 times, let's say, d2. This is going to be turning the seesaw in the opposite direction, which is clockwise. So if you imagine the seesaw, this will be moving along here. Now, the principle of moments states that an object is in equilibrium if the sum of the anticlockwise moments is equal to the sum of the clockwise moments. For example, if those two forces were equal and there were equal distances, then we'll have equilibrium. It doesn't necessarily, the, the forces don't necessarily need to be equal, however, the, their moments need to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. OK, 
Okay guys, so let's have a look at an example at which the force is directed at an angle with respect to the pivot point. We have a force of 5 newtons, which is the force of tension, which is acting on something like a bookshelf, which is pivoted across here on the left, and uh, the force is directed at an angle of 30 degrees. Let's see if we can find what moment this force is creating. This will be a perfect opportunity for you guys to pause this question and uh, attempt the problem independently. So let's have a look at the solution. So the moment of T will be equal to the magnitude of the force times the perpendicular distance. So uh, let's just call it D perpendicular like so. The magnitude of the force in this case is 5 newtons. Now the question is, what is my perpendicular distance? So I'll just call it D perpendicular. This is what we need to find. Well, let's draw it over here. So remember, a moment is the magnitude of force times the perpendicular distance from the pivot point to the line of action of the force. So this is the distance that in fact we are looking for like so. In order to find this distance, let me just label it here, the perpendicular, we're going to need to use some trigonometry. Now um, let's use sine of 30 because sine is the opposite trigonometric fun function and we're given the opposite angle. So should we just say that sine of 30 is uh, opposite over my hypotenuse. Now my opposite in this case is d perpendicular. So d perpendicular like so. I'm going to divide it by my hypotenuse which is the side opposite the 90 degree angle which is 0.2. Now I can directly rearrange for my d perpendicular. So the perpendicular distance perpendicular distance will be equal to 0.2 multiplied by sine of 30 degrees. Now the sine of 30 degrees is, um, is just a half, so my perpendicular distance is actually just going to be 0.1 meters. So now that I know what my perpendicular distance is. I can even write it over here in my diagram to be 0.1 meters. So in this case, the moment of this force will actually be 5 multiplied by the perpendicular distance, which is 0.1, which is going to give me 0.5 newton meters. Okay guys, so let's apply what we have learned so far to a past paper question on moments. So this first part here says to state the principle of moments. So the principle of moments for an object in equilibrium, the sum, I'm just going to underline this, the sum of the clockwise moments is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. Okay, so let's have a look at part C. We have figure 7.2 shows the forces acting on a suitcase with wheels that it's held stationary, which means that all the moments are going to be balanced. So the sum of the clockwise moments will be equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. We've got a vertical force of 50 newtons is applied to the top of the handle in order to keep the suitcase stationary. The line of action of the force of this force acts at a perpendicular distance of 46 centimeters from P the point of contact with the ground. This will also be the pivot point. The line of action of the weight of the suitcase acts, acts at a perpendicular distance of 32 centimeters from the top of the handle. So by taking moments about P, calculate the mass of the suitcase. Okay, let's do this. Okay, now the first thing that we need to be aware of is, as always, the sum of the clockwise moments is going to equal the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. Now we can see that this uh, force 50 newton uh, 
force is going to create a moment opposite to the uh, moment created by the weight. In fact, the weight here will be our anti-clockwise moment. So we can just label it here if we want to. In the fifth newton one, this here will be our clockwise moment. Okay, well, let's calculate the moment of those two forces. This question is kind to us, and they've given us the perpendicular distances already. So um, the way I'm going to write this, just over here on the side, let's just say that the clockwise moment, in this case, is only one, really. So the clockwise moment is going to equal the anti-clockwise moment. Normally the rule is that the sum of each of them are equal. In this case, there's only two forces acting. Okay, well, the 50 Newton force, this is acting at a distance of 46 centimeters, or 0.46, to the pivot point. And that's going to equal the anti-clockwise moment, which is the weight. Now, we don't know the magnitude of the weight. That's what we want to find out. So it's going to equal to the weight times its distance to the uh, pivot point. Now, the distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point is this, this, this distance over here, which is just 46 minus um, 32 centimeters, which is just 14 centimeters, so 0.14 centimeters. Let's just rearrange for the weight. So the weight will be 50 multiplied by 0.46 divided by 0.14. And if we uh, put this into a calculator, we're going to get 164 newtons. We have the weight of the suitcase. All we need to do is set that equal to mg. So w is going to equal to mg. And the mass will be the weight divided by g, which is 164 divided by 9.81. And if we put those two values into a scientific calculator, we're going to get 16.7 kilograms. Okay, folks, so this was just one example of moments. Uh, there are so many out there, and if you won't really want to master this topic, I really recommend solving as many of those example questions as possible. If there are any questions on what we've done so far today, as always, please feel free to uh, drop a comment down below, and please consider subscribing. Thanks.